Good day to one and all. This is John once again. If you haven't guessed it already, this video is going to be about the life, times, and genius of comic Stan Laurel. Born Arthur Stanley Jefferson, June 16th, 1890. He was an English comic actor, writer, and film director. Born in his grandparents' house in Argyle Street, Ulverston, Lancashire, to Arthur J. Jefferson, an actor and theater manager from Bishop Acklin, and Margaret Metcalf, an actress from Alverston. He was one of five children. That was the clown's prayer that Dick Van Dyke read at Stan Laurel's funeral when he gave the eulogy. The song you heard was Dance of the Cuckoos, which was composed by Roach musical director Marvin Hatley as the on-the-hour chime for the Roach Studio radio station, then known as KFVD. Laurel heard the tune on the station and asked Hatley to use it as the Laurel and Hardy theme song. In his early years, Laurel spent much time living with his maternal grandmother, Sarah Metcalf, in North Shields. He attended school at King James Grammar School in Bishop Ackland. Fast forward a bit. He joined Fred Carnot's troupe of actors in 1910 with the stage name Stan Jefferson. The troupe also included a young Charles Chaplin. Carnot was a pioneer of slapstick and in his biography, Laurel stated, Fred Carnot didn't teach Charles Chaplin and me all we know about comedy. He just taught us most of it. In 1912, Laurel worked together with Ted Desmond on tour in Netherlands and Belgium as a comedy dual act known as the Bartow Brothers, their act which involved them dressing as Romans. Finished when Laurel was offered a spot in an American touring troupe. After Laurel left England for America, the pair maintained a long life friendship, sending letters and photos. The Carnot troupe broke up in the spring of 1914. Stan joined with two other former Carnot performers, Edgar Hurley and his wife Ethel, known as Warren, to form the Three Comics. On the advice of booking agent Gordon Bostock, they called themselves the Keystone Trio. Stan started to do his character as an imitation of Charlie Chaplin. They played successfully from February through October 1915 until the Hurleys and Stan parted ways. Between 1916 and 1918, he teamed up with Alice Cook and Baldwin Cook who became his lifelong friends to form the Stan Jefferson Trio. Chaplin and Laurel arrived in the United States on the same ship from Britain with the Carnot Troop and toured the country. During the First World War, Laurel registered for military service in America on June 5, 1917. As required under the Selective Service Act, he was not called up his registration card states his status as resident alien and his deafness as exemptions. One year after launching his film career, Laurel became the co-star of Frauds and Frenzies with Larry Seaman in 1918. Amongst other performers, Laurel worked briefly alongside some guy by the name of Oliver Hardy in the silent film short the Lucky Dog in 1921, six years before becoming a team. It was around this time that Laurel met Mae Dulberg, 
Around the same time, he adapted the stage name of Laurel at Dolberg's suggestion that his stage name, Stan Jefferson, was unlucky due to it having 13 letters. The pair were performing together when Laurel was offered $75 a week to star in a two reel comedies after making his first film, Nuts in May. Universal offered him a contract. The contract was soon canceled during a reorganization of the studio. Among the films in which Dolberg and Laurel appeared together was the 1922 parody, Mud and Sand. Laurel and May Dolberg never married, but lived together as common-law husband and wife from 1919 to 1925, before Dolberg accepted a one-way ticket from Joe Rock to go back to her native Australia. The 12 two real comedies, naming just the first and the last, started with Mandarin Mix-Up in 1924 and ending with Half a Man 1925. Laurel was credited for directing or co-directing 10 silent shorts between 1925 and 1927, but appeared in none of these. Laurel's future partner Hardy however, did appear in three of the shorts directed by Laurel. Yes, Yes, Nanette in 1925, Wandering Papas in 1926, and Madame Mystery in 1926. In 1925, Laurel next signed with Hal Roach Studio, where he began directing films. It had been his intention to work primarily as a writer and director. The same year, Hardy, a member of the Hal Roach Studio Comedy, was injured and hospitalized because he was unable to work on the scheduled film, Get Em Young, Laurel was asked to return to acting to fill in. In 1927, Laurel and Hardy began sharing the screen. The two became friends and their comic chemistry soon became obvious. Roach Studios supervising director Leo McCary noticed the audience reaction to them and began teaming them, leading to the creation of the Laurel and Hardy series later that year. Together, the two men began producing a huge body of short films, including The Battle of the Century and many others. They continued to make both features and shorts until 1935, including their 1932 three-reeler, The Music Box, which won an Academy Award for Best Short Subject. <laughs> During the 1930s, Laurel was involved in a dispute with Hal Roach, which resulted in the termination of his contract. Roach maintained separate contracts for Laurel and Hardy that expired at different times. Laurel sued Roach over the contract dispute. Eventually, the case was dropped and Laurel returned to Roach. In November 1937, Dolberg was back in the U.S. and sued Laurel for financial support. At the time, Laurel's second marriage was in the process of a divorce, with Dolberg's legal suit adding to Laurel's woes. Fast forward and skimming through, in 1941, Laurel and Hardy signed a contract at 20th Century Fox to make 10 films over five years. They had made six Fox features when the studio suddenly abandoned B Pictures in December of 1944. The team signed another contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer in 1942, resulting in two more features. Revisiting his music hall days, Laurel returned to England in 1947 when he and Hardy went on a six-week tour of the United Kingdom performing in variety shows, mobbed wherever they went. The duo were greeted by thousands of fans outside of Coronation Hall. Around this time, Laurel found out that he had diabetes, so he encouraged Hardy to find solo projects, which he did. In 1950, Laurel and Hardy were invited to France to make a feature film, titled 
a tall K. The film was a disaster. Laurel had a stroke on April 25th in 1955, from which he recovered. Hardy had a major stroke on September 14, 1956, and was unable to return to acting. Oliver Hardy died August 7, 1957, at the age of 65. Those who knew Laurel reported he was absolutely devastated by Hardy's death and never fully recovered from it. Laurel was in fact too ill to attend his funeral. He refused to perform on stage or act in another film from then on. He had no interest in working without Hardy. Laurel was a smoker until suddenly quitting around 1960. In January 1965, he underwent a series of x-rays for an infection on the roof of his mouth. He died on February 23rd in 1965, age 74, in his apartment. Minutes before his death, he told his nurse that he would not mind going skiing, and she replied that she was not aware that he was a skier. I'm not, said Laurel. I'd rather be doing that than getting all these needles stuck in me. A few minutes later, he died quietly in his armchair. Laurel had quipped, If anyone at my funeral cries, I'll never speak to them again. In 1969, Stan Laurel was given an Academy Honorary Award for his creative pioneering in the field of cinema comedy. Laurel was introduced by Bob Hope and the award was accepted by Danny Kaye. Laurel had achieved his lifelong dream as a comedian and had been involved in nearly 190 films. He lived his final years in a small flat in the Oceana Apartments in Santa Monica, California. Laurel was gracious to fans and spent much time answering fan mail. His phone number was also listed in the telephone directory and he would take calls from fans. One of my favorite lines from Stan Laurel, you can lead a horse to water, but a pencil must be led. Okay, well, that's what I had for you. Hope you enjoyed this one on Stan Laurel. As always, I enjoyed cleaning, beautifying, and providing preserving luster to his and his wife Ida's head marker, so it can endure for the many fans yet to discover his work. Have fun, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.